In today's video, we're gonna be replacing ball joints in my 2012 Ram 3500. Uh, we're gonna be replacing them with uh, Synergy manufacturing ball joints. Uh, these guys are lifetime warranty uh, and rebuildable. So that was another thing that uh, I really wanted to have in my next set of ball joints. Um, so for the future, I don't have to press them out. I don't have to you know, throw my head into the wall trying to get these things pressed in and out. Um, this is going to be a huge thing for me uh, to be able to depend on, uh, better quality product, uh, a lot of uh, better design, I would say. Uh, if you go through their website, I've got the link in the description. Uh, they've got a great design, how they did it, why they did it. And uh, these guys are made in the USA and uh, uh, they know what they're doing. That's the truth. So uh, hopefully this can be a help to you. We're going to be going step by step uh, along the way to be able to show you exactly how to do things, what you're gonna need, all the right tools, uh, the right sockets, all those things. Uh, I'm gonna be listing those things off, so hopefully if you follow along, you can do this at home by yourself uh, or with a friend or, or somebody who's got more tools than you or, or something like that to be able to get these things docked out yourself. Uh, I know there's other videos out there that uh, show you how to do ball joints, but I wanted to be as thorough as I possibly could be uh, to be able to be a help to you so uh, hopefully we can get this accomplished together and uh, get back on the road. Uh, we, we've got to get as many miles out of our truck as possible. And uh, we want the best value uh, when we are spending dollars on our trucks. Um, every, every penny counts and it adds up. So if we're putting money into something, <clears throat> it needs to be a quality product uh, that we're not having to replace every so often that's just continuously just dying on us. Uh, we want to get good quality products for the right price uh, and be able to do it ourselves and save save the money. So uh, hopefully this can be a help to you. And uh, again, I'm, I'm actually wearing my Cummins, uh, I don't know if you can see that, Cummins 100 year uh, anniversary hat. Uh, I got this not too long ago. Uh, I'll put the link in the description if you want to get it too. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, pretty excited about it. So anyways, uh, hopefully this can be a help to you. We're gonna get into the video and we'll get going. All right, so uh, we've already got the wheel off and uh, I've already previously taken off the steering linkage here. Uh, this is a 21 millimeter deep uh, to be able to get this off of here. So right now, as you can see, we've got free play uh, on the right side here. So uh, what we're first gonna be doing is taking off the caliper caliper and the caliper mount and uh, we'll get into that and uh, then be able to get deeper into uh, the rest of the uh, axle. All right, so I'm gonna be using a 5 8 deep to be able to get off the caliper from the caliper mount up here and then down below as well. All right, so up next we've got the uh, bolt holding the bracket on uh, to the caliper uh, I'm sorry, to the rotor. Um, it's a 15 16th. Uh, I'm going to be using a deep uh, again to be able to get this one off and then the bottom. Uh, what I'm planning on doing is uh, before I get this bolt off, actually, I'm going to zip tie the actual caliper. I'm going to get this off of here, uh, make sure the pads are clear as well, and then be able to take this whole thing off, zip tie it over here uh, to so the, the uh, brake line. Uh, and everything doesn't get messed up, uh, disconnect it, and then uh, be able to get off. I'm going to do the bottom first, and then the top bolt here uh, for the bracket, and then uh, be able to get that off. All right, so next, you're going to need to get a short 13 sixteenths, and uh, you're going to put that right on there, and then you're going to need an extension. Uh, I've got other extensions, but... Uh, a shorter extension will work just fine like here uh, and then I've got my drill that I'm just going to put in through here loosen it up break it out and then um, go from there uh, so you'll need to do that for all eight here and then you'll have to you know pull sorry uh, pull it out each time and then go to the next one so uh, you need to take out these nuts so that's 13 16 with a short and then uh, an extension all right, so uh, one thing you do need to do, uh, just a good idea uh, to have already set up, is uh, before you start taking off these nuts here, uh, that go on here, get you some of this stuff. Uh, this is, I think it's fairly old, uh, but uh, this 
this product right here just spraying in there to penetrate it uh, just loosens it up so much better uh, it's it's just such a good uh, good product I've used uh, for a little while now and uh, never it's always gotten it off uh, I haven't had to go use anything else uh, so anyways yep use that product uh, if you uh, haven't taken these off ever or if it's been a long time uh, you got to use something to get in there to get these nuts off before you strip anything out or mess it up so anyways after that you just need to take a rubber mallet and uh, be able to get this off here and uh, so this is now off and uh, we can get a little more into uh, the business here and uh, be able to take the rotor off there we go all right and now you're able to really see the kind of guts inside of here um, so this is going to be uh, the next step uh, you've got four bolts one here one here down there down there on the back side so you're going to have to be going going at it uh, from going at it from the back here and uh, get those bolts out of there uh, you're probably going to need uh, you can do a short but probably going to need a uh, I'm going to use a deep and then an extension to be able to get back there and I will get you uh, that socket size in a second all right so in order to get these bolts out of here uh, this is a 18 millimeter uh, so I just used a deep uh, with a little extension here and I uh, was able to get that out there we go uh, able to get that out right there and uh, do the four there uh, you can obviously just tilt this around and use it to your own convenience so I'm gonna hit this the right way uh, it also be a good idea to have uh, the actual u-joint and the stuff uh, lined up so you can actually just go straight in uh, you don't have to fight with it you don't have to go at a weird angle so uh, this should be a fairly simple uh, little thing here for these four bolts 18 millimeter deep all right so after you get those four bolts off up there and then on the bottom uh, you're going to need to take a rubber mallet again make sure that the wire for there we go uh, there we go. Yeah, so your wheel bearings here, uh, we're wheel bearing hub assembly, uh, that this wire is clear. It's taken off uh, from this, and uh, this is good to go. Then you're able to take this out, pull the whole thing out of there. Uh, you don't even have to take off this uh, if you're just going to be taking the whole uh, rod out of there. So uh, that's what I'm going to be doing at least and uh, be able to get into here and we're almost believe it or not almost to the ball joints uh, so here we go so one thing you do want to make sure that you do before you pull out the actual uh, axle here uh, is the uh, electrical connector here needs to be taken out of right there uh, that needs to be uh, unlock the red part and then uh, push down the black area right before that and be able to disconnect this so you don't have to fiddle uh, with this when you're trying to pull it out because the cord is not long enough. Uh, so that is one thing you do to make sure uh, that you do right. All right, so next we've got this whole thing free now and uh, next we've got to get uh, the, uh, you can see there, yeah, okay. So you can see there, we've got to get those lined up. So curl those back. I'm going to be using uh, needle nose pliers here to, uh, to straighten these out, pull the pin through, and then uh, we'll be able to get the actual nut off the top here. We'll do the same to the bottom. Uh, on the bottom, we're going to, after we take that all the way down, we're going to leave it there. We're going to use a little sledge, uh, probably a, uh, a rubber mallet to hit this as well, uh, to hit this down, and then when we do that, this will be able to drop down. We'll be able to take this off uh, at our convenience, not it just crashing down uh, after we take off that bottom nut that we left on. And then uh, we'll be able to go to the next step. To be able to get this nut off the top uh, ball joint here, we're going to be using a deep 1 and 1 16 socket. All right, so for 
the bottom nut here. We've already got the uh, cotter pin pulled out. And uh, I'm going to be using a deep 33. And uh, this gets right in on there. And uh, we'll be able to loosen this up, get it all the way down, and then be able to mallet, uh, hit this to where it'll drop down. It'll come close. It'll hit the nut. It won't just completely fall to, fall to the ground. So uh, this is just something you need to do to uh, get this loosened up. And then uh, after it's loose and broken apart, then you can actually uh, just take off the nut here. And then you're actually to the ball joints. Uh, so then we'll be able to actually get to uh, what we're replacing today. All right, so now that I've uh, got this beat down here, it's loose, it's resting on the bottom nut. Uh, we'll just take off the nut here. This will lower down and then we'll get right into the ball joints. All right, so we're gonna start with the bottom one, getting this out. Uh, there's a little clip in here. I need to clean this out a little bit, but there's a clip in here that I'm gonna be using uh, my needle nose pliers uh, to be able to get this out of there. Uh, what you're gonna do is either go on the inside and be able to separate uh, be able to separate it uh, there uh, you can see it moves as well so you can get it at the right angle to be able to grab one one side of it and be able to safely see here yeah um, I'll eventually get it here but uh, be able to uh, grab this you pull it off uh, before that you're gonna need to uh, loosen the uh, fitting here uh, so that this can actually come off and uh, then you'll actually be able to do the actual pressing out of the ball joint uh, on the bottom uh, the top let's see here the top uh, doesn't have that little ring that goes around it so uh, you'll be able to just press that out um, uh, this one goes up and then the bottom one goes down. Uh, so bottom goes down, top goes up, and uh, makes it fairly simple for you. But, uh, yep, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take off the fitting here, get this clip off. Um, let me get a little closer so you can see better. There we go. So there it is right there, uh, the, fit, the uh, clip that uh, you just got to grab one side or both sides and spread them apart and then you'll be able to uh, get that off so so what we've done here is i've got the press set up ready to go uh, what we're going to be seeing is because the ball joint goes down we've got to have the actual press uh, on top here pressing down on the top of the uh, ball joint and then on the bottom side, we've got to have this free and clear so that this thing can actually go down. Uh, it's got to be able to clear that. So what I've done here is I've braced the bottom side uh, all the way with the little cup and everything below here uh, onto the actual frame uh, of this whole, uh, whole bracket here. And so when we actually turn this, this is going to compress and push down, pushing the ball joint you know south going down and yet it's going to fall you know for, further and further into this open space inside here going down uh, when I first did this I had a really difficult time I didn't know what I was doing um, you can possibly damage uh, a ball joint when you're putting it back in if you do it the wrong way so uh, we're getting rid of this so it's not that big of a deal but this is what you're looking for when you're actually trying to get these out of here. You got a clear enough space on the bottom side to get this pushed all the way down. Uh, when you do get it compressed at a certain uh, certain pressure, uh, you'll hear a loud pop generally. Uh, it's gonna be a large, you know, banging sound type of pop. And uh, it might scare you for a second, but uh, it, it got pressed through. That's what it is. It came loose on the other side. You've cleared it and you're good to, to release it and let go. And one last uh, thought for you, I'm using a 7 8 deep uh, on here to get this. I'll be using my drill as well, so I uh, shouldn't have to be cranking my life away here to try to get this pressed out, so uh, not, not too big of a deal. But, uh, yep, uh, you want to go slowly just to make sure that it is going out evenly and uh, be really careful uh, as you're going 
uh, pressing it down to make sure everything's solid. Uh, I had a little trouble the first time, uh, just a second ago, when I tried to get this out, and uh, it was just dry as a bone in there. So I put some more um, spray in there and uh, just kind of let it sit there for a little while. Really just got it all around in here. That'll help break things up. So at this point, with it being properly uh, lubricated, um, I was able to uh, put, apply pressure with uh, the press. And I just gave a couple little small taps with the hammer. And uh, that busted the, the first uh, little portion of it through. Uh, added some more penetrating oil there and uh, really just tightened it up again. Each time you do that, you need to make sure that you uh, realign it and that it's centered where it needs to be uh, for uh, how you get that going. Each time you're going to have to re-tighten it, each time it, it breaks through another uh, little leg of it. So uh, eventually we got that uh, fully uh, out of there and uh, just tapped out uh, the last little bit of it. Uh, with a hammer and uh, it just kind of fell through, fell off. So now we've got the C-clamp um, pressing down from on top around where the ball joint would be and then the bottom of the C-clamp is going to be pressing directly on the uh, bottom part of that upper ball joint. Um, you're going to want that completely centered so uh, you're not actually touching against the, uh, the frame of it. Um, we're then able to uh, get that partially pressed out there, got uh, some oil on there, and literally just tapped it out with the sledge, and it came right out. All right, folks, so we are finally to the halfway point. We've got them knocked out. Uh, one thing we want to do, uh, it's really necessary for us to do, is uh, to be able to clean this out, get all the grime. Uh, if there's any burrs or anything along the edges, of uh, here they need to be cleaned off. Uh, it needs to be uh, completely smooth. It needs to be dried out, um, wiped out. If there's any gunk, there's plenty of gunk around inside here uh, even before uh, I put the spray on. And so uh, both the bottom and the top have got to be cleaned out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that for mine. So Lubra plate is what I'm gonna be using. And uh, it's a heavy duty general purpose water resistant extreme pressure grease. So this is go gonna be what I'm gonna be using uh, for mine. I'm gonna be putting it inside here, putting it along the edges of the actual uh, ball joint and uh, it's uh, got a good reputation. So I'm gonna be using this uh, for my ball joints uh, after I get it all cleaned up, smoothed away, no burrs around there and uh, we'll get into it. All right, so now that we have Everything cleaned out. Uh, there's no burrs, no uh, obstructions in the in the lining of uh, the ball joints going in. Uh, next, we are on to the actual installation. Uh, congratulations! Um, <laughs> so we're going to start with the bottom one and uh, the zerk fitting that we're going to be uh, having. You want to put it in a certain place. Uh, you don't want it going. Uh, obviously like this, going right into uh, your tire, uh, to your uh, to the whole housing there. Uh, you don't want it really towards the back. Uh, what Synergy recommends uh, is that you want it going forward to the front of the truck, so this way, and then slightly to the center so that when you turn your wheel to the right, you can get in here and you're able to grease your fitting. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do here today. And uh, obviously this is, goes in from the bottom. Uh, one thing that they do recommend also is that you take off the boot uh, from below before you uh, press it in uh, so that you don't actually wreck your boot uh, if it were to get caught or something could you know happen. So uh, I just went ahead and took that off as a precautionary uh, measure and uh, we're gonna go ahead and install the bottom ball joint. All right, so in the instructions, this is one very critical thing. If you're, if you're gonna be buying the Synergy MFG uh, ball joints, uh, the link will be in the description down below, but uh, this is very critical um, that you follow this. If you're gonna be, when you install uh, the lower ball joint uh, that this is actually applies to, 
this is the design and outline of what's going to be inside the ball joint. Uh, if you're going to be taking the ball joint out and installing just the body here, uh, it, this is crucial uh, that you do this. When you pull all of this out, everything else that comes out, um, it's hugely important, uh, something that I experienced, to line up the bearing here. There's a little niche in the corner, or I'm sorry, not in the corner, but uh, there's a little niche in the bearing that it's perfectly matches the roll pin. And this stops it from the bearing completely uh, spinning. And if you do not get that lined up properly and you shove everything in, uh, there's going to be some major problems. I accidentally, uh, after I installed it, I put uh, the bearing in uh, with the preload washer and everything, and it was not set up. Um, so this is a hugely important thing. I ended up having to uh, press out the body and uh, be able to get the bearing uh, a little easier to, to pull that out and line it up correctly. Um, if you do not line the bearing up with the roll pin, uh, you'll have everything in, and then right before you put on the dust cover, uh, I'm sorry, the dust boot, um, when you tighten up that cap um, and the, the lock tab washer uh, in between there, uh, you're going to have some extra space. You're going to see some threads on that cap. And uh, you're going you're gonna to have it tightened up, and the actual stud is going to be uh, very tight. It's going to be in there. And you're going to try to tighten that up, and guess what? You're still going to see threads. It's not going any anymore, trust me. Um, so before you make a mistake and do what I did, uh, just to begin with, um, you've got to make sure that this bearing is lined up with that roll pin. That is critical. Otherwise, it's not going to go in all the way. That, that same space that you're going to be leaving out on the cap. And uh, really, the bearing is going to be able to be spinning around with it and uh, that's going to be trouble ahead uh, i'm assuming eventually the roll pin would would crack or break or something uh, potentially and uh, you're going to have a real headache on your hands so uh, don't don't just say oh it's good enough um, if you have space and with this cap and uh, it's 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 more uh, than it really should be when it when you first got the the ball joint and you took it out and, and inspected it um, seriously, you've got to fix that and correct that. Um, that is that is way too important uh, when you do that. Also, if you take out the stud and uh, all, all the grease gets on other things where you lay it down on and stuff, uh, you've really got to make sure that's well greased when you put that in there. Uh, when I re-put, uh, I'm sorry, when I put the bearing back in, I made sure everything was properly greased, uh, including the preload washer below and above so that everything is well lubricated, everything's good to go back in. Uh, when I put it in, everything just went in like a charm. I uh, got the stud in there, and uh, I was able to tighten up the cap, and uh, that worked out very well. So uh, this is just a, a watch out, don't do what I did, and uh, save yourself a headache. Make sure if, if you are gonna be installing it um, without the actual stud and everything inside there, uh, just be very careful when you're reinstalling it. Uh, that little niche there, the, the roll pin, it's inside there, it's dark. Um, make sure you line it up. Uh, the, the actual roll pin is, uh, is lined up with one of the four um, little slots, I guess, uh, on the body. And so you're able to match it up with that. But uh, man, it's just, it's very difficult to, to line that up. So uh, be very careful when doing that. And uh, just wanted to give that as a, a help to you uh, as you're installing this. Just wanted to give you another thought. Um, when you're doing this, uh, you don't just hammer it down and just wait until it can't go anymore. What you need to do is watch below and be able to see, is this thing going in straight? Is it going straight up? Is it going crooked? Uh, how is this thing going inside? You need to reevaluate and stop and make sure that this thing's going in straight, that it's not going in cockeyed, that you're not literally breaking the ball joint or harming the hole. <clears throat> uh, you need to constantly be 
looking at it, evaluating it, seeing what's going on. Uh, also, the uh, thing that I rented from the uh, local auto parts store didn't have what I need to be able to do this properly. Uh, and so I'm improvising. <laughs> and so uh, this is, uh, I've debated about buying my own uh, ball joint uh, press kit and everything just to have, you know, all the uh, options to be able to use and uh, not have to revert to using something like this, but uh, this is working. It is going in straight. Uh, I keep loosening it up, reevaluating, seeing if this thing is actually going in vertical, if it's going in straight, if one side is uneven, uh, being able to feel around and see, hey, is there anything, is, there, is this uneven? What's going on? Uh, that's a very important thing when you are pressing in your, your brand new ball joints, don't break them. Uh, don't just crank it down, hammer it down if you have a uh, air tool and just call it good because you may be in trouble. You may just have broke uh, something that was not supposed to be broke. So uh, anyways, that's just another thought for you. All right, so uh, we just got the bottom ball joint put in here. Uh, we got the clip put in here as well. So uh, one thing you just need to watch out for is when um, when you're putting in the ball joint and if you think you have enough clearance but the clip isn't fitting, um, that's an indication that the ball joint hasn't actually been brought up all the way. So uh, you shouldn't have a whole lot of trouble getting this clip in here uh, when you are trying to put that in. So uh, make sure it's brought, in, brought up all the way possible uh, and it, you're able to actually see the uh, uh, layer underneath there where you can get the clip in. Uh, then you're going to get the Zerk fitting. I'm about to go get that. Uh, tighten that up. Put that in here so you can uh, grease it in the future. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and get up to the upper ball joint. All right, so one thing you do want to make sure of is that uh, you've got the uh, cotter pin holes lined up going straight, uh, perpendic perpendicular to the uh, actual axle here. And uh, you're going to want to make sure that those are lined up uh, when you tighten this up uh, and then also make sure that uh, this is going to be if you disassembled it uh, then you're going to need to make sure that this is pr all the way lined up there's no extra movement in here uh, this is this is as tight as it really gets so I uh, need to make sure that uh, with that on then you're able to go around and put back the uh, 90 degrees the other side on both sides so over here and over here to be able to put those flaps back down so that it stays in place it's it's locked in place and uh, that it's not going to come loose as you're driving down the road and uh, so just make be, just be aware of that all right and so the last thing that we're going to be doing is going to be putting on the boot on the bottom make sure that goes in there so that we didn't we took that off so it wouldn't get damaged during the installation uh, along with the whole assembly down here, uh, the actual joint down there. So uh, that is now securely on there. It's all evened up. Everything's tight. And it's lined up the way we want it for the uh, cotter pin. So we're going to go now to the upper ball joint. All right, again, just to make sure, um, you need to make sure that when you're pressing this in, it needs to go in level. Um, also, when you uh, have on the bottom side uh, the... Uh, the actual bolt that goes down, you need to make sure that that's lined up properly and that it's not going to get caught on anything down below. Um, I'm using a four-wheel drive uh, set as well as the regular ball joint set. Uh, so this is one of the fittings that it had in that and uh, that's able to be an additional help to me. Uh, in the future, I may buy my own um, full set to be able to do this. Um, but uh, for now, I'm just going to be uh, renting this and uh, not have to fiddle with it. All right, so we've got the top one pressed in. Uh, remember to uh, be able to uh, get this twisted, put something through there, a screwdriver, something like that, uh, to get this lined up uh, north and south or uh, perpendicular to the axle. Uh, so the front going that way, rear going that way and uh, be able to get this lined up again. Um, so we're going to now put on the Zerk fittings and uh, get this start to be uh, put back together. 
All right, so I used a 3 8 drive with a 5 16 to be able to get this uh, on there tight. And uh, it's on there good. So uh, again, that's on the top and on the bottom. Um, I'm probably going to have to use a, uh, a deep 5 16 uh, and maybe even a quarter drive to be able to get into here uh, for that to be lined up. It's a little tight to try to get this beast in there. I might be able to get it. Looks like it's going in, but uh, anyways, yep, uh, that's the 5 16 and uh, getting the fittings on there, and then we will start putting things back together. All right, so now that we've got both ball joints fully installed, the Zerk fittings are in, the C, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the clamp goes around here, it's installed, uh, everything's tight. The bottom, uh, the actual uh, clips are in the right positions, two up, two down, uh, back to the original place. Um, now we are able to put back on the whole knuckle here. Got it lined up, right? All right. And man, that is tight. So we've got the bottom nut back on. And we're just going to get both hand tight, bottom and, uh, and upper. All right, so with our torque wrench, we are going to be uh, tightening up the lower ball joint. Uh, no more than 50 pounds. Um, so with your torque wrench, do that deep. All right, and with your... Uh, top nut, that's going to be a deep 15 16 with your torque wrench. And I'm going to be uh, going up to 70 pounds. Uh, that's what the instructions say, so we'll do that. Okay, so again, we're at no more than 50 on the bottom to start out with. Then we're at 70 on the top. Uh, one, one tip I would also just say is, have your whole uh, knuckle facing to the left. Uh, so you can actually get over here on the left side as you're working and get to it. You can put your hand underneath to hold it up. Uh, same thing for below. Makes it much easier. Um, and then next, we're gonna go back to the lower ball joint. And that's gonna be 150 pounds. All right, so we've got the wheel hub assembly uh, mounted up here. I've got the four bolts that go with it. And uh, again, we're gonna be using the uh, heavy duty uh, water resistant extreme pressure grease. Uh, we're gonna coat these babies up pretty good. And uh, again, I'm using a uh, Luber plate. Uh, and uh, this is a good product, uh, super lubrication and uh, it's able to do the job, meant for this kind of stuff exactly. So uh, I know um, Synergy has their own uh, heavy duty um, extreme pressure grease. So uh, either pick some of this up or their stuff. Uh, either way, gonna be good, good quality for you. And uh, I'm gonna get these bolts lathered up pretty good. Uh, get this all bolted up and uh, we'll get uh, things put together. All right, so we had the wheel hub assembly underneath the rotor torqued down to 150 uh, per Synergy's uh, torque spec on that. Um, we've got the rotor on here. And then uh, to get these bolts, uh, put this mounted on here, I uh, just got these fingers tight. Uh, I'm going to be using the drill to uh, get these a little tighter. Then we're going to be getting these to 150 as well, uh, foot-pounds. So... Um, that's just gonna uh, speed things up a little bit for me, but uh, you don't have to do uh, use the drill on this. Uh, I need to be slow anyways. Again, uh, this is the uh, 13 sixteenths short, and then uh, we're using the uh, little short extension on this uh, as well to get that uh, in there all the way through the hole, as you can see. So. Um, uh, actually, I might not have to, uh, to use the drill. These are fairly 
Might not be too bad. So anyways, um, yep, do what you do what you want to do. Uh, but yeah, get these to 150. Don't don't crank it down. Don't break anything off. Don't get crazy. Um, but uh, after that, I'm gonna clean these up quite a bit here. Uh, these are not. They look horrible actually. But uh, I'm gonna get these brushed off. Get a wire brush. Clean these up. Get some uh, pressure grease on here, and uh, get this good to go. So yeah, I'm gonna get these cleaned up uh, quite a bit with a. Uh, brush and uh, get these well lubricated on here uh, to be able to get the uh, 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 lug nuts on here later on. Um, I'm not going to show you the uh, uh, getting the caliper mount and uh, the uh, caliper itself back on here. Uh, if you need to go ahead and uh, uh, rewind the video but uh, this should wrap it up uh, for us, um, uh, one other thing just to make sure, make sure that uh, this wheel hub assembly uh, line here, it's out of the way, it's underneath the, uh, the shield. Uh, let me show that. Make sure it's underneath there uh, so you don't accidentally get that thing cut uh, by your rotor going back and forth. And uh, you should be in business. So uh, this will wrap it up for this video. And I hope this was a help to you. And uh, hope you are safe out on the road. Um, do everything slowly when you're going to be uh, going at this uh, project to get these ball joints way in the back here uh, replaced. And uh, again, uh, the links in the description um, are, are going to be in there for uh, stuff that I'm using. And I uh, hope this has helped you. Have a great day. God bless. And we'll talk to you later.